A Chinese celebrity has been banned from the all-you-can-eat barbecue for eating way too much. An 86-year-old grandmother has been crowned Miss Holocaust, and a university defends their student sex work training program. These are the weird stories for Thursday on Weird AF News, the only daily weird news podcast hosted by, you guessed it, a comedian. No, you didn't guess it. Why would you guess that? A Chinese man has been banned from the all-you-can-eat barbecue because he just ate way too much. Uh, a Chinese food live streamer claims that he's been blacklisted from a buffet because he eats too much. Well, you know, he's a live streaming foodie. He's going to be eating a lot, I'd imagine. Wherever he goes, he's going to be eating, just stuff in his face because apparently people want to watch other people eat on video and live stream. I don't know what this is all about, but people are into it, okay? To me, it's the most boringest shit you could ever watch in your life. I mean, unless it's a beautiful woman eating, I could probably watch a beautiful woman eating, yeah, for hours, days, weeks, years, just for the rest of my life, maybe. <laughs> no, seriously, though, this is very, to me, it's very mundane, uh, uncreative content, but people seem to enjoy it. Um, you know, this guy probably has more followers than me. I, I bet he's, he's Mr. Kang. He's pretty famous. Apparently uh, Mr. Kang told the media that he's been banned from a seafood barbecue after a series of binges. So I guess he's been there a few times to live stream his shenanigans. Uh, he ate 1.5 kg of pork trotters during his first visit and then 3.5 kg of prawns on another visit. Kg, kg. Oh, see, I, don't, I really don't deal in, in kgs or gs unless I'm buying co uh, cocaine. Uh, <laughs> just kidding, guys. I don't do that stuff. I just, it's just caffeine for me, guys. It's just all caffeine all the time. Yeah, except for maybe New Year's uh, or my birthday or Christmas Eve or I, mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's some hardcore drugs before a Thanksgiving meal can be very good. You got to you need something to get you through that meet up with your relatives that you can't stand, right? Uh, anyways, I think this is a lot of food. In other words, he's eating. Mr. Kang said that this restaurant is discriminatory against people who eat a lot. Uh he says, I can eat a lot. Is that my fault? I didn't waste any of the food. I ate it all. I made a video of it. But the restaurant owner told the media that Mr. Kang was putting him out of pocket. Here's a quote from the restaurant owner. Every time he comes here, I lose a few hundred won. Even when he drinks soy milk, he can drink 20 or 30 bottles of the soy milk. That's a lot of soy milk. It adds up. When he eats the pork, he consumes a whole tray of pork trotters. As for the prawns, usually people use tongs to pick them up. He uses a tray. He takes them all. He's putting me out. Well, you are offering a um, all-you-can-eat buffet, sir, and this is the fallout of that. Occasionally, you're going to get somebody who eats a little bit too much, right? This is the cost of doing business. You know, some people are going to eat just a very, very tiny amount of the pork trotters. You know, some little, some little grandma, some little auntie, just going to eat a few. And then, you know, on that deal, you, you made out. But then once in a while, you're going to get this guy like Mr. Kang. He shows up, bam. Next thing you know, whole tray of prawns. The story is trending on the Chinese social media. It's racked up 250 million views with a wide range of opinions. Some people claim that the restaurant should not be an all-you-can-eat restaurant if they cannot afford it. Others felt sorry for the owner. Last year, the Chinese government actually started cracking down on eating influencers, and some of these videos have been banned. Uh, this came after the president, Xi Jinping, called on people to, quote, fight against food waste amid rising concerns over food shortages. Well, yeah, you're going to have food shortages in China. There's too many of you. You need to cut down on your reproduction over there. <laughs> what the hell? Can, I mean, look at, hey, I'm standing here as a man who's had a vasectomy. I can say these things. 
I think you need to vasectomize a lot of China at this point. It's just too many, it's just too many people. It's just, too, it's just out of control. And now you don't have enough food. You got food shortages. That's when you need to start vasectomizing the population. All right, that's a little crazy of an idea. Okay, sure. I'm not in charge of anything. So who's going to listen to me anyways? I'm just, you know, hey, I'm just trying to make the world a better place, okay? Yeah, one vasectomy at a time, one all-you-can-eat buffet at a time. And then, you know, lastly, I just want to ask, what do you guys think of this Mr. Kang and the all-you-can-eat? Is this, is this wrong of the restaurant to uh, make a fuss over this? I mean, you're an all-you-can-eat buffet. In my opinion, you know, this is the risk you take. Call the show, 646-450-2012. An 86-year-old grandmother has been crowned Miss Holocaust Survivor. This is a very upbeat story of the Holocaust. They're very rare, upbeat stories of the Holocaust. This is one of them. There was a pageant, a beauty pageant for Holocaust survivors that took place in Israel this week. Ten contestants competed for the title of Miss Holocaust Survivor. The beauty pageant is designed to honor women who survived the Nazi genocide. Contestants ranging in the age from 79 to 90 competed in this beauty showcase, which was much like other beauty pageants. They had their hair and their makeup done and they wore gowns and sashes and they strutted their stuff down the catwalk, these grannies, beautiful, beautiful women. The contest was held at a museum in Jerusalem this year. It was canceled last year due to the pandemic and sounds like this is something that happens every year. Organizers say this is meant to give respect to the dwindling number of Jewish women who endured the Holocaust and survived to rebuild their lives in Israel. Good for them. I'm looking at a photo with this lady that won. She's so pleased. Good for her. Here's a quote from one of the contestants named Kuka. After what I went through in the Holocaust, I never dreamed that I could get to where I am with a big family, two kids, four grandchildren, two great-grandchildren. Yet here I am at this great age, 87. It's a godly thing. It is indescribable. Ah, she's so pleased. Not only that, not only are you there, but you're also in a beauty contest, Kuka. How cool. Another contestant from Romania actually won the pageant. Her name is Selena Steinfeld. She's age 86. She moved to Israel in 1948 after surviving the Nazi attacks. She's a great grandmother herself. Good for you, Selena. I'm looking at a picture of her. She's so happy. Look at her. What a sweet grandma. Oh, I love grandmas. Oh, my grandma's amazing. Okay. Uh, then there's some stats on uh, how many people the Nazis killed. We'll pass over that. Um, <laughs> we don't want to get into that. Now, there is a quote here from someone who's against this. Uh, she's a chairwoman of Israel's leading Holocaust survivors group. She criticizes this pageant. She said, this is totally macabre to me. I'm in favor of enriching people's lives, but a one-time pageant masquerading survivors with beautiful clothes is not what is going to make their lives more meaningful. Well, maybe you ought to ask them, lady, because I'm looking at a photo of these women and they seem very pleased. It, to me, this event seems like it, it is meaningful to them. Uh, so, you know, why don't you ask them first? This just seems like a party pooper of a person. What's wrong with this? This is great. Celebrate them. Celebrate survivors of this horrid historical event any way that you can, whether it's a beauty pageant or a kayak race or a, I don't know, a cheesecake eating contest. Who gives a shit? Just like bring something to these people. Yeah, this person's ridiculous in my opinion. It shouldn't be in charge of a Holocaust survivors group. In my opinion, I would fire her immediately. I'm not in charge of such things. Not really in charge of anything. Uh, there's a quote here from, Someone named Dana, who's a, a grandchild of one of the women who competed. She says, we will show them how much we love and appreciate these women. Thanks to them, we have a future. We have a country. How much beauty there is in these women. I love it. Especially knowing that they went through so much horror. This is a wonderful event to celebrate them and their lives. Oh, see, this is great. I love this stuff. It's a very weird event. I didn't even know it existed, but I just love stuff like this. And... uh yeah, celebrate. You like podcasts? You're listening to my podcast. Maybe you thought to yourself, I'd like to make a podcast. 
Too difficult? No, not with Anchor. Anchor has free creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor distributes your podcast to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. They have advertising integration, so you can even make a little money off your podcast. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your creation. Good luck with your life, man. A university defends their student sex work training course. Durham University has defended its decision to offer training sessions to help students involved in sex work. Uh, Further Education Minister Michelle Donnellan had accused it of legitimizing a dangerous industry which thrives on the exploitation of women. But the university actually says it was acting responsibly by offering students advice on how to stay safe within this industry. Last week, its students' union offered staff and students guidance for people that are involved in the sex industry. And I'd imagine at a university, you're going to have some students involved in the sex industry because it's I don't know if you've been paying attention to the price of a higher education in the United States, but it is ridiculously overpriced and not everyone can afford it. And some people have to do things uh, that they normally wouldn't do to make money to pay for a higher education. It's ridiculous how expensive higher education is in the United States. A buddy of mine named Adam Hunter, shout out to Adam, one of my best buds in comedy. He has a joke about it, as a matter of fact. He said, uh, Bernie Sanders wants to make college free And I don't like that because it would ruin strip clubs. Uh, His point is (laughs) a lot of the strippers are paying for their college education. It's not my joke. It's his joke. But, you know, the point is made that, you know, you find this often at college, at colleges and universities. So why not offer some guidance and some help and some information for people who are actually in that industry and also attending class? It's it could be very helpful. I don't think it legitimizes the sex industry at all. And then that's a whole other debate. Um, Durham University is uh, offering the courses. They said that they were launched following actually requests from a number of the concerned students. So actually students were asking for this. A spokesperson, spokesperson said, we are emphatically not seeking to encourage sex work, but rather we are seeking to provide support to our students who are involved in sex work. By the way, there are many forms of sex work. Some don't even involve touching another human being. A lot of it is happening in the digital space these days with OnlyFans accounts. And so anybody can open an OnlyFans account and you don't know what your what kind of Pandora's box you're opening by going on there as a young woman. So you know, you need to be informed. You need some information. You might have some questions. What do I do? What do I do when someone does A, B, or C in the digital space? How do I handle it? It's supremely helpful in my opinion. So we got a lady here who says, I'm deeply concerned that any university is legitimizing a dangerous industry which thrives on the exploitation of women. Well, do you work for the university? If so, why don't you make it cheaper to go get an education? How about that? And then maybe people won't have to do such things. It's ridiculous. (laughs) I still owe student loans. I hate it. Trying to pay off my student loans in a damn closet. There's no way to live. It is, uh, here's another quote, it is a right that vital support is offered to women who are being exploited. However, this course seeks to normalize selling sex, which has no place in our universities. I don't, I highly doubt the course seeks to normalize selling sex. Lady, that's a lady, of course, it's always some lady, it's always some Karen. (laughs) She also added that students facing hardship should be supported by their institution and the government. yeah, I, I mean, I agree. You should also be supported by the government and institution. But I mean, the fact of the matter is that's not what's going on. There's over a trillion dollars owed to the government in student loans. They know it. They don't allow you to write it off in a bankruptcy. This is money that they want. They're benefiting on this high price of tuition. They really are. Um, the U.S. Department of Education is the hugest higher institutional lender in existence and they know that this is a this is a cash cow. They're not going to make it cheaper. <laughs> and, this, and the universities are making money hand over fist. Do you have any idea what USC makes? Just in endowments alone, it's hundreds of millions of dollars a year. It's outrageous. And yet they still make the students pay, who knows, 30K plus to go there a year. I mean, it's ridiculous. 
And then you wonder why people are getting into sex work or whatever the hell they're doing, selling chemicals, uh, whatever you have to do to get by. I'm not going to say I did that in college, but yes, I did that in college. <laughs> Just a little bit. Hey, man, come on. Times is tough. Uh, all right. Well, anyways, do you guys think that this course is legitimizing sex work? Call the show 646-450-2012. We have some, we have some hot topics today. It's, uh, <laughs> Getting very serious on today's episode. I apologize, guys. Hello, my dear friends and listeners. Hey, I um, just want to give you a little disclosure here that I'm not recording this episode in the closet um, because I'm not at home. So if it sounds a little different, that's why. There's no, uh, you don't have to reach out to me for technical difficulties. I'm just not in a perfect, a, a great space to record this episode. And this is going to happen for the next few days, just FYI. Uh, I want to give big time shout out to Meredith. Meredith sent me some coffees. Meredith bought me coffees. Meredith also 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 <laughs> hey Meredith also sent me a little note. She wrote sending love and holiday wishes from a firefighter slash medic on Long Island, New York. Love your podcast. Oh, sending love and holiday wishes from a firefighter on Long Island. Oh, I love my Long Island ladies with the big hair. And I love your nails. I bet your nails are on fleek, aren't they, Meredith? They sure are. They sure are. Oh, my goodness. Long Island. That accent is so tremendous. I'm trying to do it. I'm really not doing a good job of it. You have to really um, experience it for yourself. Just YouTube, Long Island accent. It's one of the greatest. It's just as hilarious as the Boston accent. And it sounds just as déclassé as the Boston accent, I have to say. <laughs> I love it, though. Well, listen, Meredith, thank you so much. I appreciate the coffees that you bought me. You know you got to keep me caffeinated to keep this show running, and you're doing that, and I appreciate your support. <coughs> I'm choking. Hold on. All right, we're back. Got two new patrons as well. I'm going to give a shout-out to Sarah Joss. Sarah Joss lives near Richmond, Virginia, a lovely place, and uh, she's su showing her support for the Weird AF News. She complimented my singing of Rage Against the Machine, so she's all right in my book. Uh, Sarah, I just want to say thank you so much. Big shout out to you and your whole family. I appreciate you supporting the show. Happy holidays, and maybe we'll see you in Richmond sometime, huh? What about that? And then we have uh, Mr. Mark Edwards. Mark Edwards became a patron. I'm so grateful. Mark Edwards, I don't know where you're from. I'm going to find out, though. I'm going to reach out to you. And uh, Mark Edwards not only gets that great feeling of supporting a five-day-a-week Weird News Podcast, the only one of its kind, but Mark is going to get his name up on the wall in the studio. Uh, yeah. Uh, also, Sarah as well. You guys are getting your name right up on the studio wall. Isn't that pretty cool? I think it's pretty cool. So I need to know where you're from, Mark Edwards. Please um, message me because I'll put your little I'll put your city next to your name. I like to look at my wall and be like, wow, look at all these people all over the world that um, think that what I'm doing is, is, is it's okay. It's okay. It brings something to their lives. <laughs> Enough of them to give me a couple bucks, buy me a coffee a month. It's pretty cool. Now, you can join the Patreon or buy me coffee directly from my website, weirdafnews.com. Yes, that's what you can do. Or you can go to patreon.com slash weirdafnews and join the Patreon there. Or download the Patreon app and then just do a little search for Weird AF News. Weird AF News. It's the only one there. Um, if you'd like to reach out to me on Instagram, at funnyjones. And uh, uh, email funnyjones at gmail.com. Uh, and as I say that, I realize this is a good time to give you the email because you might want to send me some Florida articles because tomorrow's Florida Friday, as you know. We'll be doing all weird news from this week from the state of Florida. So send me those Florida stories. I would really appreciate it. And, well, thanks. Thanks for listening.